formation in three, two, one. Here we go. <laughs> What happened to turtle formation? Wait, turtle formation? I thought you said squirrel formation. The thing about the turtles that we always try and keep forefront in our minds is that they're fun and they're brothers. The first movie was great in showing us the group, but we've always talked about this movie being more about each individual brother. Turtle power! Luckily, we have these unbelievable actors to bring the turtles to life. Let's just say we're four brothers from New York who hate bullies and love this city. All the guys that play the Turtles are super talented and they give you so much to react to and you end up loving them so much because they were all so perfectly cast as their characters that I feel like that sort of brings a, the relationship to life. The guys are awesome. I, I mean, I, I've said this over and over again. I, I don't know what the movies would be without these guys. There's so much genuine camaraderie and, and love that we have for each other that, that, that's been there from the very beginning. It's amazing to have the brotherhood that we have. I dare you. Dare you. Uh, Bear, one, one more time. We've been through this experience before, so there's a lot of trust there. We all know each other now. So we can just come to work and, you know, have fun. Do it! These four guys are as close as it gets as friends. So they had to fracture in the movie, you know, unlike they ever have in real life. We may be brothers, but we are not a team. I think a great challenge this time around is, is, is trying to dig up new ground and to reveal a part of these characters that, that hasn't been seen yet in the comic books, in the past movies, and to really flesh out these characters in an even more three-dimensional way, which is really, really exciting to play. How these four guys are brothers, and, and, and the fun parts of that, the bad parts of that, and, and how through thick and thin, that's OK, and that's, that's a natural part of growing up. I don't know what to do. Donnie's nose is in his computer, Raph's brains are in his biceps, and Mikey's head's in the clouds. I can't get them all on the same page. Leo is dealing with a leadership crisis in this movie, where he's a teenager trying to govern a group of crazy teenagers and get them to listen. If we could get our hands on more of this stuff, it could be life-changing. We don't need that kind of change. Pete Plozak was incredible as Leonardo. You can see in Pete's performance the fact that he's a leader, but you can also see some of the indecision in the conflicts that arise. There's even a chance that ooze can make us human. We're turtles, whether you like it or not. With the new opportunity to become human, with the power of the purple ooze, brings a whole new threat to Leo's leadership, his ability to keep the family together. You put me in charge, and Shredder slipped through our fingers. Donatello over there in the purple, he's a technical genius who is technically a genius. We all know Donatello as the nerdy one, the tech guy. In the sequel, we are going to get to see a side of Donatello that's really kind of warm and really fun and really funny. This must be what they came to Brazil for. It's the interdimensional portal opening thingy above. Well, there's probably a more technical name for it. We see a lot more emotion from him this time, a lot more depth than we've certainly seen from film one. We have a system that works. You shouldn't mess with the formula. What was exciting for me is getting a look inside uh, of the relationships between all four brothers and getting to see these guys fight and get angry at each other and, you know, all the things that families do. Uh, you're actually seeing on screen this time. Get out of your head and communicate. Well, what do you expect? He's all logic, no skills. Well, coming from the guy who's all instinct, no restraint. Dude, what do you know about anything? You're all heart and no brains. How could you? You may know a lot about strategy, but you know nothing about feelings. We want it to feel like there are some real stakes here, so it's a balancing act between the humor of, amongst the turtles and the realness of what they're having to battle. The ship's designate is the Techno Drone. Commanding officer goes by the name of Krang. I don't know that guy, but I hate that guy. I love playing Mikey. He's he's just the heart and soul of the group. He's just fun. He's like the he's like the really fun younger brother that you know you either had or you wish you had kind of thing. We were sent by the supreme leader to eat delicious humans 
and dip them in ranch dressing. He's the funny one, and he's loose. It kind of, you know, just seems like he doesn't care about anything. And and I think there's a lot of fun in that. Nunchucks Giganticus! <laughs> You know, when Noel puts on the Mikey voice, it just makes you smile because, you know, it's like anything. You see, you're hanging with Noel off camera and then he goes on set and then suddenly Michelangelo starts talking. You're like, oh, there he is. That's so fun. Now, the people in New York need us to set aside our differences and work together, which begs only one question. Are you two guys like a thing? I look at Mikey kind of like the glue that holds, holds everybody together in a weird way because he, no matter what, He's he's always got a pure heart. Wait, think, look, if you tell him that I told you that I told him that, uh, we'll never finish our hip hop Christmas album. Raphael's a character who everyone is uh, he, they're used to him being the angry guy, but in this movie we're also going to see a side of him that is protective of Michelangelo, and he's got a big heart, and he's looking after his little brother. You should consult with us before you decide to do something like that. I consulted Donnie, and we decided that And what about nothing... Mikey? He don't get a vote? There's only one vote that counts in this family. Mine. Alan Richardson is amazing as Raphael. He's got this incredible physicality that he brings to Raphael. You can, you can see him kind of hulking around. He's got this great posture and this great walk, and you can tell that he's a guy who's been lifting a lot of weights. He's like a big, cuddly teddy bear. A big, cuddly teddy bears were incredibly violent. Man, I connect to Raph in a lot of ways. He thinks things through in, in the sense that there's a right and a wrong, and I'm just gonna do the right thing, and I don't need to, I don't need to think about anything else. I relate to that. I like that he's, you know, he goes right for the jugular no matter what. Enough! It's time to take out the trash. <sighs> Splinter sees the boys that he's raised his entire life growing up a little bit. And part of seeing his boys grow up means that he has to impart a really important lesson, which is that the turtles have to take accountability for their actions. He's allowing the turtles to figure out what they need to figure out in their own lives. Your boyhood is drawing to an end. You are becoming young men. The choice is yours. When it comes down to it, do we want to drink this purple ooze and become human? And the answer is no, because they realize who they are is, is more than OK. Normal. What fun is that? It's about the power of family and what family can do when they are working together. That's what Ninja Turtles is, is all about. We're going to need strategy. Instinct. Logic. Boatloads of heart. 